Hola community, welcome to Blender today live! Blender 225! 25, it's also actually the version of uh, Renderman that came out uh, last week, but that, what does it have to do with Blender? Well, it actually they released a, a version of, uh, of Blender, the Le Renderman for Blender, which now I think it's, yeah, it's 25. But other than that, we this week we have a bunch of uh, development updates, not as many, and the big, big, big one that you probably were waiting for, it's not there. Ho, ho, ho! What, what, are, what, what happens? What is... Ho, ho, hey. ho! Hey! Hello! Hey! Oh, <sighs> crap, you're tall. Okay, let me, you stand there, to and then... Move the camera a bit up. Yay! Okay. I can lean. You can, no, no, there you are. But now my head is... <clears throat> I can fix it. So what are you doing here? Why don't you put a stool here? Okay. So oh. I have a surprise. Really? For what? me? Or for everybody in the community? For everyone. For everyone. Also for you. <laughs> right? It's all surprises. Yeah, actually so, I haven't seen anything. So <laughs> So yeah, so people who know me, yeah. they know that uh, at least for 25 years, I love little toy figurines. I uh, toys from games or from films. I've been collecting them with Pokemon. You know that? You still have my Pokemon? I, I have them, not, yeah, not here, but I have them. I have yeah. a Charmander and a... Yeah, I love those. And I always see other companies making those things and I think, I don't have our own toys, right? High quality collectible toys. You have that, right? We should, we should. Yeah. So last year, I was special. Yeah, the corona time we had some time to do other things so i thought let's figure out how to work with a chinese toy factory and get toys manufactured and now we have them no way uh, we brought uh, some uh, exclusively to exclusively the all the way so one here's another Uh, is this visible for the camera? Where's the camera? Where they are. Where is the camera? <coughs> Where is the audience? Yeah. Ah, Look at that. Tell her. Tell her. Wow. <coughs> They're real. So it's is. the official stuff. Look at the bottom here. Yeah, it even has all the crap that you want to have on bottoms of toys. Like, not swallow and And we the... even have an official barcode. Even? Yep. It's all official. So let me make some um, unboxing first. Go, 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 do some unboxing. Alright. Uh, yep. This is legit. Shift it out. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's that is the character Rex. From <laughs> sprites. Wow. Okay, that valuable the, the value of that collectible went down immediately. Although it went up because it's held by. Ah, turn it around. It doesn't get more legit than that. A label. Wow. The watch, even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm describing what you're showing because the uh, microphone is over here. But <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It is super amazing. All right. So this is... Oh, my God. What is this? It's... This is Ellie. From Sprite Fright. I hope you have watched Sprite Fright by now. But Everybody has seen Sprite Fright. Yeah, especially if you're watching this. Look at that. Ah. That's kind of amazing. The buttons, even. So legit. So these are not flexible. Please do not move them. <laughs> Just saying. This is the very first time we have an official Blender toy, product, collectible, adult's toy, but the good kind. <laughs> okay, so 
They're even number 25 and 26. Why? Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, starting today, you can uh, get them on the Blender website. Or we the have a, a big 25% discount for everybody who's a member of the studio website. And of course, all the proceeds go to the Blender project as usual. But we have to sell at least a thousand of each or so before we start making. Thousand. Oh, a thousand. Uh, so you made a thousand of this each? More, fifty. Oh wow! <laughs> but the startup cost is very high. Yeah. To get this first time. Yeah, the first time. And if it works, we will finish the sprite flight series. So there will be also box. Make your own sprite fillets. Little figure. Right? Oh. Super nice. Then we go all the way back to yes. and the idea is to all series the Bunny, Intel and the Dragon, Coro Cosmos Laundromat, Cosmos Laundromat, Cordo you got, Otti. You got the, the bot bot of course. Oh with, yeah, oh uh, wow, that would be a tough one. For, uh, kill, sheep and uh, Victor. Yeah. yeah. And how is uh, the ship going to be? Ship. Yeah, is it with the watch? Sheep, uh, not a ship. The watch. Yeah, yeah, with the watch. Yeah. Woolly? No, not woolly. This is uh, PVC. Yeah. So it's uh, sturdy, you can drop it and um, eat it probably. But, uh, no, it's, no, uh, no. It's a real toy, collectible. This is much better quality than what you can get for three. Have you first thought of doing the print? Yeah. And yeah. if you do, if you do this, right? It uh, already breaks. And... Yeah. Well, of course, people who buy those leave them in the box, unopened, put them on the shelf, and have all 30 figurines years to come. And then in 30 years, put them on uh, 30 eBay. Years. And... Oh, yeah, 30 <laughs> years. 30 years, huh? Good investment. It's. So, it's amazing. I mean, this is the, the, the most fun way to help Blender development, uh, for sure. <clears throat> and you, of course, cannot wait to get Oti and the Llama. Yeah, yes. I was hoping. I was hoping I can... Uh... Uh, you can start modeling uh, the, the pose <laughs> for the Llama, right? Yeah. How's the Llama going to look? The we hair. Well, how are we going to make hair for, for those yeah, characters? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think the best, the, the one's going to sell the best is going to be Big Buck Bunny, for sure. Yeah. But uh, it would be interesting. So, or, or maybe we can ask people what which one is the next one they would like to see. From the Sprite Flight. From, uh, from uh, the feedback is always welcome. Uh, already uh, producing uh, next one. More? So, but, uh, we got this. Uh, this is a handmade sample from the factory. Wow. In China. This is unreleased. So, we got the, the third already. You can bring it over yeah. here. <clears throat> you tell me, what is this? But this is uh, J. Right, right. And I want to do Phil, and of course uh, Victoria, and then the sprite. With Elder Sprite and And those things could be all done with. If people like this. Okay. Uh -huh. I like it. This is, I, uh, I, I, it's can, removable. We, uh, we want to. Um, something can become ac uh, ac accessory. But I think we will make it in one. But I mean, this way people could 3D print their own uh, and have their own. Uh, uh, so cool. Yeah, it's super cool. That's amazing. So yeah, you see the, the lineup. Huh? Yeah. Does he have a llama in the in the hat? Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, it's the. I think it's a it's a fake uh, 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 brand of something. Because of, for uh, for logical reasons, we could not uh, copy Adidas. Okay, uh, of course, no, no. And so the amount of stripes is uh, limited to two. Yeah. Huh? So. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. It's amazing. <clears throat> so. Uh, what yeah, I, what that's I, the, uh, my secret project for last year. I'm super happy that I now know how to do this because it's really, really complicated. Yeah, we have uh, super nice videos from the toy store. They show how they are painting it. But at first I thought 
they would have a factory full of like little cool girls with little brushes painting no, all no, of no. these things and being whipped and stuff. <laughs> oh, no, Jesus. Not, that's not, that's not. No, no, now. that's not. So they are professionals. Yeah. So what they do for every little element, like the teeth, the eyes and the eyebrows, they make a mask. It's a mask of plastic. Yeah. And you, uh, they make a, a squeezer thing, you put it on the mold, spray it, next, next, next. Still hand work, but with masks that always exactly same. Um, uh, doesn't require a lot of skill. So yeah, okay. Uh, work, everybody can know. <laughs> that's but, amazing. That's cool. It. So, um, I guess these are staying. Now <laughs> you can keep it here. Yeah. The time being. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, I don't know if it's visible. No, it's not visible. I will take no, it. No, it's not visible. That it, no, no, not the. So, huh? uh, this is amazing. So, uh, thanks for dropping by. Yep. I am um, pretty happy to see this. Uh, you finally get to show this because you've been working on this for over for a year. For yes. a year. <coughs> for a year. Yeah. I have to learn this. Not easy to do. No, 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 no. But, uh, finally know how. And uh, the toy factory was of great help. How to, uh, how to get this all done. I hope people like it. I think uh, it seems to be that people are happy in the chat. They, do, you, do you plan people. to order yeah. one? And of course, if you're a subscriber of the Lender Studio website, you get 25% off. That's <clears throat> definitely has to be more than. Yeah. So, yeah, if, so you, you better sign up to the studio. Yeah, that's right. And you. then you, get, uh, you make money. That way. Actually, yes. If so. you subscribe, get the toys, then unsubscribe. Oh. That would be a. <laughs> Hey, I it. wish you a good day and uh, see you later. Thank you. Wow. All right. So I think. Sorry about that. <laughs> Did you see how, how I'm I'm 172 or 73 and he's like 190 or so. So yeah, um, I hope you uh, like that interruption for a bit. We had, uh, if you don't know what who that guy is, he made Blender 30 years ago, and uh, he is the CEO of the Blender Foundation. He also uh, likes to do things precious like this. Besides following the Blender development as a, as a whole, as a big picture, also produced many of the of the of the films that happen here, and is now producing. These kind of projects among other things and talking to people and organizing the blender conference and making the um, uh, working on the blender lab initiative so yeah it was pretty pretty epic i uh, i hope you had fun with that uh, now we can continue with actually with what is new in blender um or in the Blender community, on the Blender multiverse. Oh, by the way, yeah, the link to actually get the things that we've been showing <laughs> here, uh, it's it's on the uh, Blender, on the description of this video, but also on store.blender.org. Now, um, the, um, we're working on this website, so it may not look the, the prettiest thing around, but if you actually go to the, um, you can actually see it in, this is, this is a much nicer, image than just showing it in there you can see the amount of detail um but yeah there is uh there are two of them there are collectibles and uh if uh, you're subscribed to the blender cloud you can go to your settings to your profile settings and there's a coupon code there that you can get and uh, get a discount okay with that out of the way let's see what it's new oh yeah i mentioned the um, the renderman 25 because this is the 25th episode actually some of the toys hey he took the toys Oi! Gee! You see how the pressures are? Damn! I I have... I... I, um... I need to go buy myself some. <laughs> Do we have a discount for working at Blender? I'm gonna ask. Alright, so yeah, Renderman came uh, out. Unfortunately, it seems like they're still on Blender 2.83 LTS. That's the version they recommend. I don't know if it works on 293 LTS, which would be great because that is the latest, no, the oldest LTS that is um, maintained, uh, actively maintained until for a few more months, a few uh, more, a few more months. I think it even I saw people work making it work with 3.0 even. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have um, if you have made it work. 
Okay, next. The other project that has been... Um, the other project. The other little thing that happened last week is that... Um, um, uh, it's so random. So, on uh, during the weekend, um, Elon Musk, or Twitter, removed the blue check on accounts such as Blender. Like, Blender, the Blender account knows no longer look like a, a verified organization unfortunately so yeah how do you know the blender the, the blender account that you're contacting is legit well i guess for the number of followers too and, and because we have this text but this anybody could do it so we added a diamond which anybody can anyway but yeah um getting a, a an actual certification like a verify verification for this have become horribly expensive actually they, they added this giant buttons here and it's like a thousand one hundred and fifty euro per month every month that's that's like rent uh here well no actually it's, it's more cheaper than rent but still it's way too it's ridiculous why would you spend a thousand per month you could, you could better spend it in other stuff so yeah so we uh so ton suggested to start using the <laughs> the little diamond icon on all our blender accounts and he's using it, I'm using it on my own account, and I'm using it also on the Blender Today account. And a bunch of people joined the initiative. So if you want to uh, show on your social media that you are part of the Blender group, Blender team, people, um, you can add the, the little red diamond in there. Other than uh, that, I think it's time to see what it's new in Blender as of last week, or Blender Today. There's not much, actually. There is there, there is some good stuff, but um, not much because we were all waiting for that. That big fit. You know what I'm talking about. Um, the one that starts with S and ends with emulation. And the... That, it's coming. Don't worry. It is still planned for Blender 3.6. Um, I know that the phase we're in is Blender is Beacon 2 now, which is not allowed to have huge new features, but as it happened in the past, there will be an exception because the team the, the team is working really hard in, in polishing some more features before it goes to mainstream. Um, but yeah, other than that, we will um, wait for it. And while we wait, let's see what is new in animation. Oh, the Mario Pipe has a new meaning. I, I went to watch uh, Super Mario Bros. On, la on the weekend and it's amazing. If you haven't watched it already, go watch it. The people at Illumination is like, they did such an amazing job. Um, then the first uh, section, we're gonna start with A for animation. For A animation. Uh, this is a uh, um, function that it's like uh, under the hood of Blender. You can still access it via RNA, um, but it's under the hood. It is going to be exposed better in the in Blender 4.0, but um, it's going to be part of the update of, uh, of, of Corp, but because it changes how the, the duplicate, basically the, the tool is for deduplicating keys. When you when it finds that there is a key within a certain threshold, it deduplicates, it deletes them. Um, this comes from a back report of uh, related to, to when you bake um, an action and you have some keyframes that are overlapping but not really um, so the the function to deduplicate has been updated and there is a as, as i mentioned there is some function that you can use yourself for the time being but in blender 4.0 the update command is going to use this new better deduplication tool um, it's not done yet because it would mean that you would change how would change blender would change how the functionality of the update function works which is not something to do lightly in the middle of releases better to wait to big releases such as 4.0 the next um improvement oh this is a new this is cool actually this is not really animation what is it in animation this is a a new transform orientation um option so in transform in an object when you go to the transform orientations there is one which doesn't have an icon and this shouldn't happen because blender should only have features in main once they have an icon but anyway 
parent is a new option so you can add a new transform orientation just like you, you can choose different transform orientations like global local normal gimbal the ones we are used to you can add custom ones and there is a new one for parent so it's actually going to take the orientation of the parent so let's let's see it in action we don't have many things today so let's uh, let's see so i rotate this object and then i parent this one to this Right, so this is my transform gizmo and my patent is rotated, so it should take... There you go, nice! That's so cool. We just need an icon um, for this, but um, other than that, it's so cool. You get the transform of the patent. Is this added to the transform? Oh yeah, it is added. Now we just need one more just to fill the gap. <laughs> no, no, it's awesome. Cool, patent. Um, super nice and Nathan is actually Nathaniel is actually in the chat so thank you for working on this and um, let's uh, continue though the other change which is not really related to animation but it's done by people in the animation uh, team so I guess that's why they added the animation but this has to do with um, library uh, library overrides okay well this library overrides related to motion pads so you could argue that it's for animation but anyway library overrides the system that has been overhauled in blender 3.0 and since then many uh, pieces around blender has been made overridable and actually if you look at the code it's just a one line to add what could be overridden or not if the system underneath supports it right so sometimes you um i think they had, it was a report from animators um, here or at least that's healthy i talked with healthy the other day and he was asking why is this not uh, overridable and uh, it was just a matter of asking and get it these uh, one-liners depend on the system underneath to support it but uh if you see a fee uh, uh, like a property that you think Hey, shouldn't this be possible to override, right? Like if you import a, in this case for motion pads, if you import a character, if you link a character, you make an override, you want to override certain things, certain properties of the motion pads, right? The motion path is not attached. It's part of your scene. So it's pretty, pretty handy to be able to override it on a per brick basis. So yeah, the new uh, features that settings that you can override are color, custom color, and line thickness. Let's continue with the letter A for assets. A for a assets. <laughs> English doesn't make any sense, right? Assets. So letter A. Do not show blank read-only metadata. It could happen that there are certain assets, especially the built-in assets, that are either read-only, so they have, they may have properties that you cannot change, they are read-only, right? So why even showing that it doesn't have a description license or copyright? Now this, um, these fields are going to be hidden if they, there's no useful information to show. Let's continue with the letter A for A attributes. attributes. The Oh, the work to get things more generic continues. Um, this is in, um, there are more commits related to this, but this one in particular, it's to uh, improve memory usage and performance by making attributes share the same attribute API as it used in other places in Blender already that I've been talking about in the last few weeks. The changes that benefit the, 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 Features that benefit from this change are the rest position attribute in the mesh modifier stack, um, the nodes uh, instance on points, instance to points, mesh to points, and points to vertices. They're all now they should be more memory efficient and more performance. Performant. And uh, it's so cool. There are actually this change by Hans is related to other changes that he's been working on, also to make things more generic. And it's so Nice to see that. Speaking of which, let's go to letter C for curves. Optimize edit mode selection draw extraction. What does it mean? It means faster selection on 
first. How much faster? Well, about four times faster selecting selecting a curve. 3.8. That's that's selecting curves. It's much faster. But selecting points is around 18 times faster. That's another benefit of making everything more generic and more to like reuse more of the code. And actually, these changes, as, as you can see, seven additions, 30 deletions. The more things become generic, the more deduplication of code that can happen. Always good to see. You know what else is good to see when you have hardware and suddenly Blender can support it? Or more than Blender is actually cycles. Cycles, GPU, AMD GPU binaries are now enabled again by default for Windows. So if you're downloading builds from uh, builder.blender.org, AMD GPU binaries are going to come with it. And it's uh, this change is done by using the HIP uh, SDK 5.5 uh, version of the of the, of the SK, um, which also makes it enable the light tree feature that was introduced in Blender 3.4. Light tree, as you remember, makes renders or, or your scenes with a bunch of lights much faster to render and uh, it, it, if, if you haven't seen it go to blender or slash new I think or latest yeah new <laughs> it's a shortcut that no one knows I only I use it personally to access the the, the, the latest um, release notes and if we go to the look at these beautiful notes right so cycles where is cycles Cycle, cycle, cycles. Here, bam, light up. This feature is now available for AMD graphics cards. Isn't that great? Um, speaking of another of, of graphics cards and another manufacturer. Oh, by the way, uh, there was a note about Linux. Yeah, Linux in Linux binaries are still disabled, but um, it is planned to come. Um, soon but it's not released like the drivers are not released yet that's that's uh, what happens also with well, like graphics card or manufacturer specific features they're often tied to drivers uh, manufacturers often add stuff to their drivers to make them work spe uh, with with certain applications blender is one of them and it's not released yet but it should at some point um, and when that happens the, we should enable those for Linux as well. Okay, the next change it's related to Intel GPUs. Embry 4 is here as I mentioned last uh, week and has support for GPU. So ray tracing, which means that now you can enable ray tracing, hardware ray tracing on Intel graphics cards. I think it's on. Well, I don't know if it works actually. For I have no idea for integrated graphics cards, but I know that the Intel Arc GPUs have support for like they they have like the ray tracing cores, um, like like would would be like CUDA cores, opt optics cores in other in other graphics cards. But yeah, that's so cool. Ray tracing in Intel graphics card. That's that's a huge selling point. You suddenly can use a bunch of cores that you have laying around on your GPU. Although I would like to see numbers about how much faster it is and how does it compare with um, with other GPU ray tracing capabilities. Speaking of words that start with G, <laughs> Grease Pencil. We haven't seen anything from Grease Pencil lately because the team is rewriting the entire system basically. And that's why we don't see those. But there is a change, and also a curious one, because it introduced um, features that are available in other modes, in other weight paint modes, but to Grease Pencil. These are several weight paint additions, such as Blur Tool. You can blur weight vertex weight paint on Grease Pencil objects. The Average Tool to average out weights. If you have one zero average, you get the middle. Smear tool and the, with the plus and the minus icon is in the toolbar. The user can easily switch between adding or subtracting the weight while drawing weights. 
Oh, that's interesting. Let me see. So this is object weight paint, right? Which we all know and love. I don't know who loves weight painting, but like the past me people that loves weight painting. All right, so Gris Pencil Objects also have a weight paint mode and you can do, you can turn on adding, subtracting, and a bunch of tool here that they are available in other modes like blur average and smear but now they are available in object um that's nice but we need sample weight only and uh let's see yeah nice more of the you know unifying system although it's a bit i'm a bit curious about this because oh well it also introduced auto normalize options to ensure that all the bones deforming vertex groups add up to 1.0, which is also similar to how uh, Blender, well, the mesh weight painting mode works. Control F for radial control for the weight sheet. It was missing a bunch of features. Control right click select for sampling the weight. The weight, when painting vert weights in vertex groups for bones, the user can quickly switch to another vertex group by clicking on a bone and then control left click. Then um, this is the same workflow as in the regular um, mode, weight paint mode, which is a bit curious because at some point, not far in the future, Grease Pencil is going to use basically the same code that curves use under the hood. So that can benefit from like, geometry nodes and everything that curves already have, like sculpt mode. Uh, although Grease Pencil has its own sculpt mode. Um, or, or the, the performance improvements. So it's curious that they are actually adding this when in not too long from now, they actually have to remake this or re-implement this feature in curves, the new curves object to then bring it to Chris Pencil. Um, anyway, speaking of other words that, spear, that, that started with G, such as geometry nodes. Geometry nodes has seen a well, we are waiting, we are waiting for like the big thing in geometry nodes, right? I mentioned that things start with S, ends with emulation. Um, but the team still working on improvements, such as a new node, index of nearest node. Ilya committed this change. There is a few there is a new node that is similar to the sample nearest node. However, it's different in two main things. One, the it doesn't have a geometry input. It doesn't need geometries. It's it's an it's a node that outputs the index of the closest element to itself. So if you have an array, if you have a point, like a number, like an index, it will gonna give you the ones close to it, around it. The node looks like this. Apparently, index of nearest gives you an index. And if a boolean, if it has na uh, neighbors or not, the position takes in the position and the group ID. Super nice. The next uh, improvement this is a new node, by the way. And I think it's related to, must be related to simulation. Uh, because you can use this, um, maybe taking a frame calculating around it. The next change is an improvement in optimizations for the mesh to curve node. Should be now much faster on playback. So in a simple test, Hans observed a change of 10% frames per second improvement. So that's super cool. However, in real world cases, the impact is probably much smaller. So this must be one of those test files that like use the <laughs> that specific node a lot or in ways that you shouldn't but i think uh, many will benefit because mesh the curve it's used a lot i've seen the last change um this is not really showing any changes to the to the end user but is a hint of what is to come so the change comes as follows Support outputting fields with without computing the full node. So uh, many nodes output anonymous attributes. For example, the top selection in the cylinder node. That's an attribute that you don't have to name. It's anonymous. 
Um, so usually the data comes with geometry. However, at some point you may don't want to compute the geometry or you don't need the geometry anymore. For example, in the future, with the upcoming simulation nodes, it's possible to create anonymous attributes in one frame and then access it in another frame. And at which point you don't need the geometry, you don't, you don't have to create the actual geometry again. Skipping this creation is going to um, bring a significant performance benefit. So, it's coming, it's coming. Everybody in the chat, hi Julie, hi Pablo, hi everyone, hello everyone. Any way to get Blender to work on AMD Pro Duo? No, I... Pro Duo, where is, where are those? What are those? Alright. <laughs> I already saw 10, to, uh, Tony is mentioning in the... To send me a message. Nice. We already got 10, so now we have... We, we, he said we have to sell a thousand to, to make them... Uh, to, to, to break even. <laughs> So only nine, 1990 to go. Nice. Okay, next. Um, the next change is in the M for meshes. More performance improvements. A few weeks ago, I shared the news that the, there was a performance improvement by caching the, the edges that are loose, right? Sometimes if you have doing crazy stuff with geometry nodes and you have edges around that you know in the end you don't render you can't render single edges in blender so why calculating them and this um, was cached saving a lot of time and the same has uh, the same principle has been applied to vertices which increases the time by a lot how much a lot well basically anything that used to to Anything that used to calculate, anything, any time that was used calculating those loose vertices is now gone. So, for example, in a in a test where four million vertex grid node was taking twenty eight milliseconds to calculate, now it's zero. <laughs> and the la a, a large molecular node setup, which so it can happen when you have uh, when you're using molecular nodes, when you're like having. Uh, point clouds around or that you bring you import from other systems there could be a bunch of vertices just rogue around your scene in this test 100 milliseconds went to nothing and the same with realized instances of a million cubes 131 milliseconds to zero to nothing and more on the performance front we have edges are now generic attributes. Like that sounds a kind of a substantial change. Edges, as in all edges, are now generic, which means that they are more they, they can benefit from all the changes that um, that are having applied to meshes in general, which should make things much uh, faster, basically, to compute and, and use less memory. So how about how much less memory? Well. Storing mesh edges now takes one third of what it used to. For example, on a million vertex grid, now it saves 8 megabytes. So less memory means you can fit in more geometry, basically, and whatever calculation you do, it should take much more. Much less. Juan asks, what is the coupon for studio subscriber? Go to your user pref your preference settings. I can't go there now I'll show you because I would expose my code and uh, I mean it's all cool but right but uh, then I want to buy I need to buy my own I, I've you seen I have nothing I have a little toad here but I don't have a toy myself so I need to go to the <laughs> with my studio subscription and get my own uh, which is kind of crazy 25% if you buy two to both two toys it's like that's like 20 24 euro discount it's kind of big um, but yes, let's continue. Um, no, that's it, basically. Performance improvement, much less memory. So let's continue with the M for macOS. All right, apparently, recent files, because macOS has a special way of accessing uh, recent files. 
for example, in the Blender, in the dock down there, where you have Blender there. Now you will be able to do right click and see the list of recently opened files. Nice. Same when you do three finger swipe down in uh, open Blender, for example, in the apps expose, expose, no expose, expose. Um, because Apple names everything. So expose now shows it properly and the doc as well. Nice. Open files to see. And actually we have, uh, there is another improvement to like um, system specific stuff. Let's continue. Test object. Oh yeah. Let's switch to the letter T for test text objects. There is two new operators now that allows you to go to the beginning and the end of the text that you are working on. So let's let's look at here. Well, I don't have a bunch a bunch of text here, but um, you can like let's see if I make if I have a new template like a new add-on here, and then I convert this. What was the the code to convert text to three D object? One object per line or one object? Did you know that you can that you can do this? I can convert text from the text editor into an object. Amazing. Anyway, so now there is a there should be an operator. Let's check again to move the cursor to the top or to the bottom. And if you look at the code, they introduce two new shortcuts: Control Home and Control End. Let's see if it works. Uh, control home, control end. Yeah, it does. Here, it's on the top. Control end. Well, my object is giant, but it, my cadet should be there. And it is a Vemos cadet at the end. Nice. So, two new shortcuts, two new operators. Uh, speaking of operators, let's jump into the U for UI. <laughs> U and I. Make it possible to add shortcuts to UI operator. What does it mean? Well, this is a an undo actually of a change that was done some years ago that I think it's no longer relevant and it was preventing some UI sh uh, operators to have shortcuts. You couldn't add them. For and, and what is interesting about this is that this is a bug report. So the bug report actually Someone reported like, hey, copy as new driver. You can't, you can't say that, um, um, like the, the ad shortcut operator is not there. It's not available. And that's interesting because I would have, as a user, like a not related to Blender, as a user, I would have been like, oh, it's not possible. Too bad. And I would have just, you know, stay happy with that. But someone here, Hamza, went ahead and made a bug report, which is great. Because this part of the conversation is like, hey, there's any reason why this feature is missing? Oh, where is this change? I'll make a patch for it. Oh, apparently this happened. And okay, I made a new change. And basically, um, yeah, there was some uh, code in Blender that was preventing those shortcuts from happening because something related to paint back in the days and that... Um, no, not to paint, but there was an exception already to this. Anyway, a bug report sometimes ends up in a feature. So please continue bug reporting. When possible. When it, when it makes sense, please. Cool. Um, the next change is a, just a renaming change, but it makes so much sense. Have you ever noticed that the node called invert? It was just invert. It, you could only invert colors. Like the input and output were always colors but the name of the node was invert. It made sense when the when you browse to it, like when you go into shift A, color, and then invert, it makes sense because it's color, you are under color, but when you search for it, it you wouldn't get it, right? Because then the node was invert. So now you do. So the node is called invert color. And the last change in the user interface is actually what I was talking about before. OS files operations within the file browser. So this, it's pretty neat. I was actually really literally thinking about this the other day. I was, I wanted to, I, I was looking into a texture. I think um, I wanted to load a texture or something like that. And I was thinking, it's like, ah, I wish I could open this image or 
I could open the my my text my sorry my file browser from my system in this folder. And now you can right click external, which is a weird name, um, it, but it's called open folder, and this will open the folder in your operating systems file browser. And it, if it works for Win for Linux, it probably works for the rest of the systems. I bet. Um, and yeah, super neat. And uh, there is also another option called Open, External Open, which is Open Blend File, I assume, or Open. Well, let's see. So if I have a Blend File, and I do Open, it should open Blender. It sh yeah, okay, it opened. This, this is my file. This. <laughs> Don't mind the mess. This is how I test the theme. <laughs> um, so it's good. It opens it. But does it work for other? If I don't have a filter here. And I go to like desktop and I open like file. Open. Can I open? Oh yeah, it opens images. I can. It opens anything. Okay, that's why. Because it's not limited to. This is a post that I made, by the way. <laughs> But uh, for for the Yo Frankie game in the because it was the fifteenth anniversary of my involvement with that project a few weeks ago, so I made a, a poster because I never made a poster. I made a splash screen for it many years ago, but I never made the actual um, poster. So anyway, yeah, you can open um, images, files, XCF. Okay, let's see if it opens GIMP with this. Heck yeah, nice. Opens anything. Amazing. Yeah, I made the poster in GIMP. I'm a GIMP. I'm a GIMPer. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound right. But yes. Cool. That's super useful. Super nice. Thank you, Harley, for working on this. I really was just thinking about it the other day. Um, apparently, there is some more options for Windows. Because he works on Windows, so that makes sense, right? You you can op open more things, but uh, what are they? Show, play, browse, print? Print? You can print from within Blender? Huh, interesting. Okay, let's see. That, where is the Python file? So let's go here. Try to see, okay, file browser. So I want to see the operators. File operators menu. Not even here. External operation. And yeah, apparently there is like find, show, play, browse, install. Um Okay. I don't know what this do on Windows, but sounds like a whole bunch of options. Editing, searching. Searching within how okay, to launch a search from Opening the common prompt? <laughs> okay, interesting. Well, I'm curious to see how it looks on... Oh, maybe he, he usually adds this. In. So, common prompt here. Um, should be like open common prompt here, right? Properties, external properties, external edit. Okay. Interesting. Well, um, you go and test... <laughs> The next uh, change is actually it says V font. I don't know why it's V font. It was probably the internal name of the font, but um, of the font system in, in in inside. But actually, the feature is to allow interactive selection of 3D objects, 3D text objects, which includes also double click for word selection. Oh my gosh, where is my file that I had with a bunch of text? Um, let's see. So if I do, I do a template, and then I convert this text to 3D object. I can now double. You're telling me I can double click? Nice. Double click to select text. Not triple click though. I wish. I don't, I don't think Blender is capable of, like, doesn't even know about the concept of triple clicking anywhere. But that would be pretty cool. If anybody is watching, that would be pretty neat. You know, like, triple click allows you to select the entire line. Uh, like, on, uh, for selecting, um, yeah, on browsers, on files, on everything. 
everywhere. So that would be pretty neat. I like the whole line. Um, what else? Well, I guess the same for multi word objects, right? So if you do double click, you select. But yeah, I can select everything. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, the next uh, change with V for viewport compositor. Implement ID mask node. It is. Yes, nice. There is a new node in, well, an old node that is now supported by the viewport compositor. Last week I mentioned around three or four new nodes, but all nodes now supported. But now you can use the ID mask node to mask out stuff. Nice. If you don't know what ID mask is, you may have er, maybe one day run into the ID of an object. If you select an object, go to relations and then pass index. Well, this is a number that you can use in the compositor nodes that allows you ID mask that you can give it a value and basically you map one to one. It's like a, the, a poor man's um, cryptomat. <laughs> it's like a very manual cryptomat. All right, good news for sound because sound is important. Blender Video Sequence Editor now supports sound retiming. The feature that was landed in the, was it in 3.5? Retiming now is supported in for sound, uh, for sound strips. So cool. Waveform, even the waveform overlay now is going to represent the retimed audio accurately. It's so cool. So features like this, especially related to audio, take especially a longer time because Blender has a, a has a library called Outer Space that is external, right? So every change that you that Blender needs from that library have to be pushed upstream. So they have to stay in sync. And the developer that maintains that library is um, it's not it's not working full time for Blender, so it's not always um, available immediately. So yeah, Richard is working full time, but the library people working on that library in particular not. So sometimes things take longer, especially related to related to sound. And uh, that's it actually. Yeah, there is uh, no more news. There's a bunch of Vulcan stuff that happened this week, but I think I'm gonna save those because until until we see more tangible stuff. But if you ever wonder what is the, the version that the full conversion that Blender is going to use when it launches, it's targeting 1.2, Vulkan 1.2. So just so you know. Okay, um, let's continue. Well, actually, no. We uh, the, I'm, I'm running almost running out of time, but we have five more minutes. So let's see if people have asked any questions in Blender community. Let's see. Blender Bob, late to the party. Not really that late. Half of the party was just playing with toys, literally playing with toys. Okay, so I made this um, thread earlier. Oh yeah, here you can find that pretty, pretty much every change that is that happened last week, around 240 commits almost last week which is what i had to go through today and then i picked up what i just mentioned All right so let's go to the list of what is new in blender this week let's try to i have five minutes so let's see how much i can do uh, let's go for the voted ones hey pablo does right click select have some sort of moderation moderation or even shadow ban i tried submitting my first proposal and it never show up in any feed on the website or on my, my profile although it is view viewable with a direct link there is no there is no concept of shadow banning posts. Your um, okay, so you can see it, and I can see it because I'm admin. But as you can see, it's not visible for anyone else, and I can maybe help you because let's see, let me guess, maybe there are videos attached to this. Okay, no, there are no videos. Ah, uh, but you're linking to websites outside of Blender. DevTalk should be whitelisted, but yeah, you're linking to Stack Exchange, 
which I think we haven't whitelisted yet. We have a list of websites that we whitelist and or uh, allow list, sorry, um, in order to prevent spam. And Stack Exchange is not one of them, but I can I can make I can um, make yours um, available immediately. So let's do some some maintenance. So yeah, it is actually as I can see, it is saved for it's published and um, now now it's published. So now you should see it, and it even should show and the beginning porting popular modifiers. Okay, so I need to give it a little refresh so I can upvote it and remove my upvote, and it should show here porting popular. There you go. It's second on the list. There you go. Doing some uh, moderator maintenance. Yeah. Sorry about that. We just get so much spam in this website that we need to do things like that. I'm gonna remember, try to remember to add a stack exchange to the list of allowed websites. Next change by Aditya. Next change. What <laughs> the next question? Um, let's do five more questions because I'm gonna be running out of time and still need to do Blender to Blender Oi in Spanish tonight. Hola Pablo, Blender today is my favorite place to stay updated. Thank you, but this is the first time I'm getting to watch it live, so I must say you're amazing and thanks for all the wonderful work you're doing. Oh, this is the first time you watch it live. Sorry for the a bit mess that we made with Ton when Ton arrived this today. No questions, but I just had a feature idea that I would like to share with you and the community. Kindly have a look. Well, I'm not. I can't promise that we're gonna have a a big look at the moment while live on the. Uh, stream, but ah, yeah, I saw this one adding more options to the object clear menu. Absolutely makes so much sense We can clear so many more things like clear parent clear Yeah, clear rig. I don't know what that means even Because a rig can be anything clear, clear armature maybe um, But I, I haven't looked at the specifics. I love the idea of unifying um, More settings although this is in parent though object parent has a clear parent Object clear, clear pattern. Yeah, we don't want um, settings to be in more than one place. Yeah, I know, saying this when having like the tools in two places and because you know, then um, um, it's a bit messy to. Hmm. Clear vertex groups maybe could be because this is only available in the vertex group section. Maybe it's good to have it in a menu. But yeah, now that I think of it, the clear parent, it should be in parent. Object parent and then clear parent. Being connected. Um, but yeah. Julieta says, Hello, while you have the Rosendal in the house, what are your opinions on this? Yeah, no, Tony is not uh, usually staying for the whole show. Um, but it was kind of showing today. So Blend Developer Employer by Blender Institute to work slowly on reviewing accepting code submissions. I often speak with developers about bugs or some design flaw that's leading to what users perceive as bugs. Virtually every time I, I'm told a patch has already been submitted, but none of the main developers have time to review or accept it. Other times, the contributing developers themselves are kind enough to write a quick Python operator that resolves a bug or point me to one they wrote a while ago. Um, so basically, I think it would be great if the Render Institute hire a full-time reviewer or two so the people trying to improve the software don't find themselves wasting their time by working on code that goes unused. Well, there is a... Hmm. Imagine, like, if you have the core Blender developers working on Blender, but then patches being reviewed by people who are not that experienced with Blender, uh, there is a disconnection there, right? So the people that actually, like the core developers that are working on the core specifics of Blender, must be the ones to review. Of course, they could be a first pass. It could be like a like a, anybody from the community could just like jump in and have a first pass, first review, like triaging. And some of those um, people are actually involved in triaging bug reports, for example. Um, that's that's huge. There is people hired full time to just go through the back reports list and yeah, basically um, going through the uh, files they submit, testing, uh, checking if it's not a bug or a feature, um, that kind of 
of uh, of work and that takes so much time and there is people working on that full time which is super important for reviewing code i think for the first pass maybe but i yeah you understand that um <laughs> a patch is just as important as a feature so it should be reviewed by core developers um you know, after maybe after a certain amount of time, maybe because maybe it doesn't align, maybe the feature doesn't align with the Blender way of doing things, right? Like with the with the Blender implementation, or maybe it is already planned for the future, not too far from now. So yeah, it depends. It's very complex. Um. All right, two more questions. Hola Vasquez says Arrox. Will there be more grease pencils, sculpt mode, and modeling features in Blender 3.6? Um, I'm ho if not, I hope there will be more by Blender 4.0. Grease pencil, uh, nope. I don't think many more because the window for big changes is over and the team is working on the big grease pencil 3.0 rewrite, complete rewrite. So there won't be any new features now, for the time being, for the next release, like big features. But when there are, it's going to be huge because, as we know, geometry nodes. And it's not going to be just like a baby geometry node. It's just, just started. It's actually the full-on curve support geometry nodes. That would be amazing. But not for now, yeah. Sculpt mode? Um, no, unfortunately not for 3.6. Actually, I mean, you can go and check yourself. If you go to wiki.blender.org, then click on release notes here on the right then 3.6 then sculpt you can see that the full feature list of two changes it's maybe disappointing but um that's what it is um you can check um maybe go to projects.blender.org check on modules and sculpt paint texture and here you should be able to see a bit more of what the team is working on. There is a work board, high priority debugs, known issues, and work board. You can see what are the community tasks or being worked on at the moment or that have been um, listed at least in the past. And the last question. Oh yeah, no, what else? Um, modeling features. Now modeling, not that I know. Again, you can check on the wiki. The last question is, hello, Pablo, I hope you nice, have a nice day. Very big and nice working, very big and nice working in every single Blender re release. But I think before we go very far in geometry nodes or simulation nodes, we should have, should have the basics of very important things like edge groups, face groups, multiple groups, selection groups, in the object mode level and selection groups in geometry nodes based on viewport and edit mode. Big thanks for the nice Blender dev team. Um, well, we do have you. You can see that the team, the people, the team, the, the team, and Blender as a whole is going towards that, right? Face groups are probably gonna be um, like the face, not face, face maps probably going to be removed from Blender 4.0 because the generic like groups in like attribute groups basically like vertex groups, edge groups and face groups they can be done with attributes with geometry nodes already if everything becomes as generic as the, they are making it so that should be that should be the, the, the future and I think the way that the team is working adding those things should be just as uh, as a like to hook it in probably should be just as as easy but once everything becomes generic it, it can be added more easily okay time to wrap it up it's been exactly one hour I, no one hour five okay I, I failed let's go back into full screen and let's hope the okay there this thing I hope you had fun today I had it was uh, was fun to have Tone here even though it's hard to 
uh, to get us to here in the I need to invite the light we are exactly the same height it's perfect and the light actually I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the light to come when the simulation uh, starts when the simulation nodes come uh, to, to give it a nice introduction to talk about the project because the team has been working so so hard on it there is there's new people even in the team that is that are working on on this and they're working around the clock to bring it to blender 3.6 so yeah looking forward to that and looking forward to see you again um is it gonna be next week is it may 1st is that a holiday in argentina it's a holiday i don't think it's a holiday here um so yeah i think it's gonna be next week gee next week is already may 1st where did the year go may okay may it's not much going on in june we have annecy the team is going to annecy we're gonna if you if you're going to the annecy animation festival in france please drop by but that's in june and then in july not much in august we have seagraph then we have the blender conference a lot of um fun ahead for the time being i'll see you again next week yep for sure and around the same time and definitely in the same place for another episode of Blender Today Live. I hope you watch your ear holes for that. Thanks again. I will see you next week. Have a have a great week. Happy blending. Bye.